in that in that encounter. So pretty straightforward. All right, let's move on to Fellhounds of Sargeras. Uh, let's pull up our video for that one. This one will be a warlock point of view. And uh, all right, so with Fellhounds of Sargeras, let's pull it up here. This is a warlock's one. Unfortunately, I wasn't there for uh, for any of the PTR testing this time around, so we're uh, we're being we're gracious enough to use some of the videos of people that were there. So the biggest thing with, with these guys is it's a two tank encounter, right? Pretty straightforward. It is again, single target damage. There's nothing really to AOE here. You wanna just be a single target on one guy. Alternatively, if you're you know a Destro Warlock or Affliction Warlock or something like that, um, those things really help out because you can hit both targets, you know, multi-daughters. Unfortunately, you can't cleave them together because they need to be spread apart. If these guys get close, they do a 100% massive damage increase and they're gonna murder your entire raid, which is why you need to keep them tanked separately. So what you want to do is put down a couple different markers, tank them in opposite ways, and of course, tanking 101, you want to face them away from the raid because they do have a frontal attack um, that does stack, but eventually does fall off. So here they're going to hear at the start. Um, you really want to hear at the start because there's no reason not to, right? Um, you really, you'll really you have your little cooldowns later on, or sorry, early on, and you want to do as much DPS as early as possible. Now, the thing with these two guys, and you can see there, I mean, that's a little close, probably no closer than that uh, is how long, how, how far you want to tank them. Uh, these dogs, you can see on the right side of the screen there, they have varying energy levels. At different energy um, segments, they will do one of their abilities. So each dog has three major abilities that, uh, that they go through, the purple dog and the fire dog. So we don't have to go through names and ability names. Um, what you want to do, and we're going through the abilities here, they're really simple to deal with essentially. The purple dog's abilities, they make you want to stack. The red dog's abilities, they make you want to spread. So there you see one of the red dog's abilities, they essentially drop fire on the ground, he's going to lift some people up in the air, you start shooting fire and he drops you right back down. Um, not a really tough ability to deal with, um, just make sure you're dodging that fire. Now the other one here, this is the purple one that causes you to stack. So the Siphon Corruption, you can see the big purple swirls going out. And what it's going to do is it's going to split that damage between players. They're typically going to stack in because they don't want to die. You can have a melee clump as well as a ranged clump, but that's where the damage is going to go. So you, you want to stack the rate together where possible. Now they're going to spread back out because the next dog is going to do their ability. You can see the fire dog um, will use his next here in a second. Hopefully in a second here. All right, so this one's the Inflame Corruption. So with this one, this one throws bombs on your players. You can see here the red circles uh, around different players. They're gonna explode after time. It's an eight yard radius. Make sure you run those guys out, right? So red bombs on you, run out. That is super important. Otherwise you will drop a ticking uh, uh, debuff on your raid and explode them. You can see here from the purple dog, this dog is causing this big, slow moving, sort of like a frost orb, right? It slows everybody and pulls them towards you. There's um, other mechanics we've seen similar to this. Um, if you guys remember doing Arcway, it pulls you towards you, right? It slows you down. This is where the encounter gets tough, right? So dealing with these abilities, super simple. Hey, big purple beam or big purple circle moving slowly. Okay, don't run near it, right? Run away from it, super simple. But What's going to happen is these abilities, based off their different energy levels, will interact with each other. Sometimes you're going to have an ability that causes you to spread, and the one that forces you to stack at the exact same time. So you can see how they're all being pulled. Again, with, if you have a bomb, you want to move away from other players, right? Wherever possible. There's a slumping bomb. It's pulling them towards them, and that's totally fine, right? As long as you stay away from it. It does constant increase in ticking damage. You don't want to be in that orb ever. Uh, this is the other one here. This is the... Uh, Sorry, the Weight of Darkness ability, and what it's going to do is it causes your players to be feared and does a lot of damage, but if multiple players are in that circle, nobody gets feared and just a little bit of damage. So again, with Purple Dog's abilities, you see purple stuff, stack in. And there's Desolate Gaze. Now, this one is not really shown here really well. If you guys watch the Fat Boss video, um, the Fat Boss video shows it really well. Basically, there's these big lanes, dogs charge, uh, this might have been just an old PTR video of it there. So it doesn't really show really well, but essentially it should be a massive lane coming down um, and you don't want to be stuck in those lanes. So what, what the Fat Boss video shows is the group in the middle between both and whenever you have these the lanes on you, you run them away. 
You've seen this ability before on Elisand. You guys remember Elisand Phase 2 that has those little beams that shoot out at players. You never want to be standing in them. You control where they go. Exact same thing, right? It targets a player. It's going to shoot a big line, a big sort of horse dread steed runs by and uh, knocks back any players in that line. So you're, you're dealing with the abilities as they sort of interact with each other. Here we have Siphon Corruption. So this is the stacking uh, damage debuff. So everyone's stacked in. It's split damage between everybody that's there. And now you're dealing with the little flame orbs. So this is another one where you're forced to stack, right? You're forced to stack, but the flame orbs say, hey, now there's fire under you, you have to move. Well, what other guilds have done is they put down two different markers, like a star marker and like a moon marker, and everybody stacks in for the Siphon Corruption, the one where it splits damage. And then as the fire debuff comes out, well, then everybody moves together as a group. Uh, you've seen that again before on Hero Garage back in World of Draenor, where we all have to move together, um, you know, as a group. Okay, here the orb is again pulling you towards them. Warlock throws up his Burning Rush, right? He doesn't want, he's taking lots. See, one tick of that I dropped his health down to uh, one third there. Okay, somebody died there. Okay, so Inflame Corruption, here comes the Fire Bombs. Fire Bombs run out, but at the same time, that orb is pulling you in. There we go. And those guys are, yeah, bombs happening there. And you can see a little fear happened. So those guys got feared because not enough people were stacking together. Okay, so some guilds were going to have a melee group on here. It doesn't matter, you know, which boss you assign the melee to realistically. Um, but you want to, you know, DPS them as much as possible. Sorry, Mr. Pandaria. Yes, Mr. Pandaria, Hero Garage. Okay, here comes the, uh, the knockback. Doesn't, it doesn't show really well, and here's Siphon Corruption again. So it's going to go back and forth. Uh, you're going to spread, stack, spread, stack every single time, and just know how the abilities work. You have to throw out an SLT because that ability is, you know, really going out. They're shooting away, shooting away. You can see another one of their guys died there. All right, next orb is pulling them in. At the same time, now they're dodging the fires, right? So last time it was... Orb that sucks you in and the uh, the fire bombs. This time it was orb that sucks you in as well as the fires you need to dodge. So all of the over the abilities will always ever overlap like that. Yeah, the, the abilities overlapping is what's going to make this encounter tough. So you have to know what to do with each of those little combinations, right? Well, orb just it, this is just a big inconvenience. That big purple orb, right? It's just going to screw you off. But Fire stuff, right? Spread out. Fire is simple, just spread out wherever possible. So fire under your feet, run away. Bomb, run away. Simple as that. Those things take priority. That's the key thing to take away here. Though that purple thing, an inconvenience, right? Don't worry about that purple sphere so much. But any fire stuff, make sure you run the hell away from the raid, period. Nothing more important than that. You have to run away from the raid. The other ones, I mean, you can deal with. This one, again, is the, um, the fear one. So they have enough people, nobody gets feared. In the previous one, though, you saw a couple of people get feared for a little bit. If one person runs off, they'll take some damage and they'll have a long duration fear um, the entire time. Here come the bombs. You can see those guys inflamed. Flames coming out. Taking fire damage on everybody and they, you know, explode for a little bit. Okay, as the uh, fight goes on here, so this is a, what, a six, seven minute encounter for these guys. Um... Again, tuning a little bit different, but you'll see what happens near the end of the raid when certain abilities uh, interact. And you see the really tough combination as well. And he has a tank? Yes, it is a super boring encounter, um, except that, you see, see what happens there? If you look over there at the purple uh, dog, the tank actually has a debuff. Right, so the tanks may actually get a debuff, and you as a tank, yes, it's a super boring encounter, you just sort of tank and spank, which is what you should love. Um, you may get an ability on you, which forces the raiders to run to you, otherwise you'll get feared, you take massive damage. And you can see here, the tank has that big fire charge, right, where the things charge towards him. Didn't really work on this iteration of the heroic boss, but we'll have a new video, I'm sure, once we've killed it on heroic. Here comes the sphere that slows you. Nice and easy, super slow. All right, and next one coming out here in a second, it'll be the fire ability. As they like to alternate, 
There's the fire stacks, you want to run away. So ideally be spread, or if your raiders are really good, you'll be stacked in, right? Here they're going to run in together, collapse, collapse, collapse. There, they got feared for a couple seconds, again, because not enough players were together. They only had two players in their circles. Uh, one of the abilities here, this will be the toughest combination. This, this one coming up here is the toughest combination of the entire encounter, the very toughest part. So this one is going to be a bomb, as well as the soaking um, split damage one, where you need to soak. So here comes Siphon Corruption, right? Siphon Corruption is the one where you have to split damage because it does a ton, otherwise it will kill you if you solo soak it. So they're all going to run together. Oh, but wait, someone has a bomb. So what do you do? What do you do when, look, you can see what's going to happen in the raid here. They're going to get murdered in a second. A lot of their guys are about to die. They have fire all over the place. They're supposed to stack. They're not supposed to. What do you do in this situation? This is where you blow your cooldowns. Again, if you have fire, fire is priority. Fire means get the hell out. If you have immunities, awesome. Run the hell out as well. Um, what happened on this one is they had both the fire debuff as well as the shadow debuff. Which means, hey, I need to run out, but I also need to stack. What do I do? Well, you better hope you have an immunity. Um, otherwise, you, you may be dead here, right? We can throw cooldowns on you potentially. But realistically, it's, it's probably going to kill you. You can see the raid pretty much died there. Um, again, fire priority. Always, 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 always run out with those bombs. It is going to murder your raid if you do, do not run out. Over any other ability, make sure you always run out. Um, but yeah, immunities, I mean, it's going to happen. The abilities will overlap roughly there at the six minute marker. And yeah, they killed it with, you know, a few people alive still. Um, and it sort of rinses and repeats from there. Um, but yeah, just know how the interactions work. Fire always run out. Everything else, I mean, dodge fire and stack it for the other ones. And you'll be totally fine on heroic with these guys. Um, super fun encounter for tanks. As you can tell here, they didn't move at all. Uh, they just, you know, did their active mitigation thing. They DPS a little bit. And they were fine. Uh, any questions about that one? Let me know. And Roshi, feel free to chime in here if I'm missing anything at any point. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's it for Felhans of Sargeras. Uh, they're a good second boss in terms of difficulty, in terms of that kind of stuff. You can see here, uh, the damage is shared, so it doesn't matter which one you attack. But, you know, if you can attack both, well, that's awesome. You do even more damage. Um, again, if they get too close within 40 yards of each other, they're going to do 100% more damage. So... Nice and super fun, super, super fun. Um, again, these are the frontal abilities here, the Corrupting Maw, uh, as well as the Burning Maw. It does a stacking damage in a frontal cone. Don't th face it towards your raid ever or else you will wipe, guaranteed. Um, and it does fall off at some point because of how the abilities interact. So, super fun one, nice and easy. Let's move on to our next boss here. Um, I'm gonna actually move on to one of the tougher bosses. Um, so, yeah, some of these encounters aren't super exciting for 